Hey there, friends and followers. So you may be aware that your credit affects your borrowing ability for various types of loans, specifically home loans. We all talk about credit scores and at what number they're at, but what actions and things actually affect them? The answers may surprise you. Stay tuned. Uh, so yes, as always, welcome back. So I'm sure you've all had your credit score impact one thing or another in your adult life. I know I have. I feel like a lot of people have problems with their credit and their credit score, not so much because they're financially irresponsible, but not properly educated on how to maneuver around them. In its most simplest form, a credit score is a number based on an analysis of a person's recorded financial files to represent the credit worthiness of that individual. A credit score is primarily based on a credit report, which is sourced from the reporting credit bureaus. Lenders, banks, and credit card companies use credit scores to evaluate the potential risk posed by lending money to individuals and to not lend to those that may be a financial risk. This evaluation determines who qualifies for a loan, at what interest rate, and what credit limits. Now, it is true that some individuals are horrible at managing their finances, but did you know that 7 out of 10 credit reports have errors on them? This can, of course, negatively affect your credit score, not to mention misrepresent you and hurt you when trying to obtain a loan ultimately affecting the rate percentage given to you, if at all. So how can you make sure that this isn't happening to you? Well, for one is to monitor your credit report. A common misconception is that you have to pay to obtain your credit report. From a quick Google search, you can find ways to access your credit report online for free. Also, once every 12 months, you're able to obtain your report from one of the three main credit reporting bureaus. Your credit report will be affected by important things like the following. First is your payment history. Now, this is a huge contributing factor to your credit score. Late or missed payments also play a huge factor as payment history equates for about 35% of your overall credit score. When you miss a payment, you have about 30 days to catch up on it before it's considered late. Once it exceeds 150 days, it is then sent off to collections. Because a lot of information doesn't always carry over correctly, if you have satisfied a missed payment, simply informing the collections of the satisfaction is all you need to get them to properly report that correction. A huge tip that a lot of people don't realize is that third-party organizations buy collection accounts from various types of lenders or institutions for pennies on the dollar, and you can sometimes settle a given delinquency for far less than what is actually owed. Next item is how you utilize your card balance management. The key metric here being determining how much available credit you have against how much credit you are using on a given card. Best practice dictates only utilizing about 30% of your available balance on any card on a month-to-month -month basis. Once that practice becomes second nature, ask issuers to raise your credit limit to really boost up your credit score. Another item is regarding any credit accounts. Now, the older they are, the better, as it shows an attractive type of financial responsibility. Anything over 10 years is considered excellent, so be sure not to close any cards or accounts that you may have opened in previous years or decades. Also, managing different types of accounts will boost your score as it will reflect that you're financially responsible enough to juggle multiple borrowing types. There's generally two different types of accounts, revolving accounts like credit cards and installment types similar to home or auto loans. And last item to affect are inquiries. Anytime you apply for any credit, institutions will do a hard pull on your credit, which then reflects as an inquiry. Individuals who rack up a lot of inquiries, especially in a short amount of time, typically have a tougher time getting approved for any type of credit as this sends up a red flag to lenders. Multiple pulls or inquiries to your credit can actually lower your score. Now, let's say that you're simply starting off and don't have much, if any, at all credit to build upon. You can make your rent and utility payments count. Typically, these items aren't recorded to your report, but if you lack credit history, services like Pinata, Experion Boost, and Rental Karma will track and actually report rent, utility, and streaming service payments made from your connected bank accounts to one or more of the credit reporting agencies for a small enrollment or setup fee along with monthly payments. Another pro tip is if you currently have some open credit cards, some companies will actually track your credit score and make it available for you on your dashboard in real time. This can give you a heads up on what type of home loan that you may qualify, along with some other factors which you can educate yourself on by jumping over to this next video, which breaks down some different loan types. Now, if you guys have any questions or would like any follow-up details on any of this, drop a comment below in the comments section. If you are considering buying or selling residential real estate here in the Marion County area, find my personal information down below as well to reach out to me directly. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with great videos like this as they're released. As always, thanks for tuning in, and we'll catch you on the next.